Relative calm has returned to the Armenia-Azerbaijan border Wednesday morning after a fire up, firefight erupted yesterday evening, resulting in four Armenian soldiers dying and three Azerbaijani soldiers killed. This took place uh, in the vicinity of the village of Der in Armenia's southernmost Sunik region. To discuss this and the ramifications of yesterday's escalation, I'm joined by Sivne, host and contributor Digran Krikorian. So Digran Krikorian, thanks again for your time. Thank you for having me. Um, before we get into some of the ramifications, um, can you explain first what happened in Der yesterday? Um, what was the chronology of events that led to the four Armenian soldiers being killed, as well as multiple soldiers getting injured? Uh, so, yeah, as you know, in late March, Azerbaijani forces took control of this temporary road that was connecting the new road of the Lachin Corridor to the territory of Armenia in the area of Der village. And uh, during that operation, they also advanced uh, into sovereign territory of Armenia. They started building their military positions or installing their military positions in the agricultural lands of the Ter village. Uh, and as you remember, there were lots of talks that the Azerbaijanis have advanced into Armenian sovereign territory. And then negotiations started. And the prime minister was talking about even some success mm -hmm. in uh, during those negotiations, and uh, that was the background against which uh, yesterday's attack actually happened. Happened as it can be clearly seen in the footage published by the minister of defense of Armenia. A group of Azerbaijani servicemen approached Armenian servicemen who were doing construction works or, or I don't know engineering works in, in that area and open fire in their direction and that caused the skirmish we had yesterday. Still hard to understand whether this is part of a uh, larger strategy, whether this is some new change in the Azerbaijani uh, policy vis-a-vis -vis Armenia because uh, the latest escalation, I mean big escalation, we know that happened in September 2022, uh, but I do not exclude uh, that uh, these incidents had probably had some local dynamics. It is more interesting uh, what narratives Azerbaijan has been uh, circulating after the incidents happened. Uh, and I think we can discuss some of these narratives to, uh, to, uh, during uh, our conversation. Well, I want to actually talk about some of those narratives. Um, the first one I want to talk about is that there was the word Iran and Iranian forces going around yesterday. Um, I saw uh, channels and officials talking about Iranian drones passing, you know, Armenian border, Iranian involvement, Iranian forces, all of this. Uh, firstly, can you explain exactly what was this narrative about Iran being somehow involved? And also perhaps why are those people peddling this narrative about Iran? Yeah, so Azerbaijan's importance and influence in the West has been decreasing for a while now. I think the September escalation of 2020 was a red line for many decision makers in Washington, in Brussels and in other Western capitals. Lots of people started understanding that Azerbaijan doesn't have the significance uh, it presents or it wants to have and that Azerbaijan is already crossing certain red lines. And the attitude towards Azerbaijan has been constantly changing since then. Lots of people are reassessing their uh, understanding of this country or this country's law, role. Um, plainly speaking, uh, there is not much at this point Azerbaijan can offer, for example, to the United States. If Europe has this gas deal issue, uh, the US doesn't even have that. And uh, even with the gas, we all know that Azerbaijan is not capable of actually uh, fulfilling the obligations of the contract they signed by 2027, double, double the gas exports to Europe, to the EU by 2027. So lots of people are questioning uh, that component as well. But in the US, lots of neutral people who weren't um, neither pro-Azerbaijani nor pro-Armenian are starting questioning the strategic role of Azerbaijan. Uh, this role has been like uh, presented by their lobbyists in the DC and uh, certain other people. That's why they have been using this Iran narrative uh, to add their value uh, for the Americans, for the Europeans. They are trying to portray Armenia as some sort of 
Iranian satellite as they are trying to portray a situation where Iran and uh, Armenia are plotting certain things about, uh, against Azerbaijan and they are trying to justify their aggressive actions on the ground by selling this Iran narrative to the West, by saying that we are the party that is confronting Iran in the region, we are the party uh, that is stopping in Iran in the region. And that's why they have been spreading all these fake news about drones without any kind of evidence uh, provided. Uh, that's why their main lobbyists, the famous expert think tankers, uh, have been peddling this narrative for months now. You know, it has become already a joke that Armenia is Russia's ally and, I don't know, Iran's satellite, people like Mag Mike Doran and other people. Uh, so, yeah, that's the reason why they have been using, and they have been using the tensions with Iran, the recent tensions with Iran, uh, to get some political points in, in the Western capitals. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting that also, uh, what is the Western perception of that? I mean, the Armenian Defense Ministry put out a statement saying that there are no Iranian drones in Armenia's uh, military uh, arsenal. Um, but on top of that, I believe the U.S. intelligence community even put out a report saying that they are sure that any aggression would be on the part of uh, Azerbaijan. So, I mean, do you think this narrative is having any success in any corners? Well, I mean, you don't need to be an intelligence officer or an intelligence service to understand that Armenia doesn't have any incentive to attack Azerbaijan. Armenia doesn't have capabilities to attack Azerbaijan. So it's clear, cl crystal clear to everyone that whatever is happening in this region uh, is initiated by the Aliyev regime uh, to pursue its policy of coercive diplomacy uh, against Armenia. So I don't think lots of people are buying this narrative. Azerbaijan has been hiring lots of lobbies, as, as we have already discussed, to promote these ideas, but uh, these lobbyists also are not that influential. People understand that they are just hired to do that job. So I don't think these narratives are effective. On the other side, of course, uh, there, is, uh, there is the Iran part in the calculus of many Western uh, decision makers. We saw Secretary Blinken's statement uh, when he justified uh, the military aid provided to Azerbaijan, again talking about Iran. So uh, there is some substance uh, for that narrative. However, uh, the narrative about Armenia and Iran planning something to attack Azerbaijan or even Armenia and Russia, of course, nobody is buying that. Is buying that. Okay, I also want to talk, there was a lot of talk about the EU civilian mission in Armenia and its ability to, to, to deter Azerbaijani aggression against Armenia proper. Others were saying that the mission's function is to observe it, it is a monitoring mission. Um, but I do want to mention that Marcus Ritter, the head of the, the EU civilian mission, um, he is based, I believe, their headquarters in, in Vyotsor region, said that if there is no Azerbaijani attack by spring, that would mean that the mission has had some sort of success. Um, can you clear up exactly what was the confusion around the EU civilian mission? Is the EU civilian, civilian mission there to deter violence? And what is it there for? Yeah, there's lots of misunderstanding and misperception about the EU monitoring mission. In Armenia, lots of people do not actually understand how limited their capabilities are. We're talking about 50 monitors and 50 other supporting staff who have to monitor the entire Armenian-Azerbaijani border, not just the eastern border of Armenia, but also the border with Nakhchevan. They do not have any kind of technical capabilities, technical equipment. They are just traveling around uh, trying to show that there is an international pre presence on the ground. Plainly speaking, the, the, the whole goal of this mission is to have some people with the flag of the European Union uh, to send the political signal to all the uh, actors in the region that probably you should avoid, escal uh, avoid escalating the situation. In Incidents like this, during these incidents like this, they do not have any capability of understanding uh, who actually started the incident, uh, who was responsible for the incident. There's the, there is another misperception about uh, the functions of the EU monitoring mission. Lots of people uh, think that uh, they have to publish some sort of public statement. They are not going to do that. That's not their function. They are reporting to Brussels 
they are the European Union's eyes on the ground. Uh, they allow the European Union, and not just the European Union, but the international community in general, to have a better understanding of the situation on the ground. But they are not going to publish any statements. Uh, they are not going to actually uh, identify who started the skirmish or the escalation uh, and so on. Uh, but however, having said all of this, it's still important to have this uh, mission on the ground in Armenia. And that's why Azerbaijan has been working so actively to get rid of it. That's why Azerbaijan has been targeting the European Union. I mean, the European Union, uh, we also criticize the EU a lot and uh, there is some solid basis for, for that criticism or critique. Uh, however, this criticism of the EU mission coming from the Azerbaijan uh, pursues one goal, to get rid of this factor on the ground so they can uh, pursue with this policy of military pressure, coercive di diplomacy vis-à-vis uh, -vis Armenia. And interestingly, interestingly enough, they share this view with Russia. Of course, they have different motifs. Russia uh, is considering this mission as an attempt to actually oust Russia from the region. And Azerbaijan wants to actually continue its uh, aggressive policies on the ground, but the fact is they, these, these actors are both sharing the same view about the mission. That's why uh, we, of course, uh, need to criticize the mission if there are some shortcomings, although I, I, sh I should repeat that there shouldn't be any kind of uh, high expectations for, from this mission. But in the meantime, we should understand uh, that this is a stabilizing factor, this is a stabilizing force for Armenia. Okay, well, Ikran Krikorian, thank you very much again for your thank time. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on CivilNet.